Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan and on the heels of the CFTC chair saying that 70 to 80 percent of the cryptocurrencies are not securities. Well, we've got a big announcement from the CME group. Launching on July 29th, XRP is going to have a reference rate plus real time indices. And I'm going to explain what this means and I'm going to explain what it doesn't mean and also what it could mean in this video. The XRP bulls like the news up 6.25% on the 24 hour, ranked seventh in top gains among the 100 by market cap. The Solana bulls are not quite as bullish. You can see here in the perpetual futures eight hour funding rate, it's almost even. So all just almost as many shorts as there are longs. The market here in the Solana camp is very undecided. And on the approach of the one year anniversary of Judge Torres summary judgment decision in the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit, General Counsel Stuart Alderati posted first and foremost, it was a watershed moment to find as a matter of law a token, in this case, XRP, in and of itself is not a security. The decision led to a spat of others, most recently in the Binance case, that recognized the SEC's gross overreach and lack of faithful allegiance to the law under Gary Gensler. The courts have provided a much needed check on the SEC's behavior but clarity on the token by token basis through interminable litigation is unacceptable. Policymakers on both sides of the aisle are getting increasingly frustrated with the lack of legislative progress on crypto as the U.S. continues to fall behind the rest of the world. While our case as a whole isn't fully over, remedies still to be decided, the court's ruling that XRP is not a security will not change. Even the SEC told the court it will not challenge that conclusion. Don't be distracted by the SEC's continued effort to mire Ripple and the industry in the litigation trenches. That runway is running out for the SEC. Ripple and the entire industry has and will emerge stronger long after Chair Gensler is gone. A few hours ago, the breaking news was the German government is now out of Bitcoin. Dirk from Expector said that this amount is peanuts to Germany. I posted that they've likely made a mistake. Someone said, well, you can sell anything that you want. And I said, yes, but closer to the top of this cycle, if I was managing that stack. And then it was Vintage831 who said that, uh, well, it's just stolen Bitcoin anyway. I replied back, hmm, true. And Mr. Schickdance said, this isn't their first rodeo. Yep, no doubt. Yeehaw. So what is this CME, the reference rates and real-time indices for XRP? Well, the rates are a benchmark for financial instruments like futures, contracts, and options, etc., XRP joins Bitcoin, Ethereum, Algorand, Solana, Bitcoin Cash, ADA, Litecoin, Polkadot, XLM, many others. And these rates are going to be published now, starting on the 29th of July, about every second, every day, including weekends and holidays. The data for that XRP is going to come from Bitstamp, Kraken, Coinbase, and LMAX. The LMAX group is out of London and they're an FX and crypto marketplace. What XRP holders want to watch for is if the SME adds an asterisk to the new XRP dollar reference rate. Currently, only Bitcoin and Ethereum settle in the digital asset. XRP futures will be settled in cash based on the value of XRP at the contract's expiration. I'm going to put a link to the SME's frequently asked questions. It's a 
great source for understanding what exactly XRP is getting into. What it doesn't mean is that they are going to use the XRP ledger to settle those futures contracts. Now there is potential for future blockchain integration. So while the SME group currently does not use blockchain technology for its futures markets, it has shown interest in the potential applications of blockchain and distributed ledger technology in the financial industry. For instance, CME has been involved in blockchain related initiatives and partnerships exploring how blockchain could enhance various aspects of financial transactions. These transactions, what I've seen from the derivatives platforms that do use blockchain, they have to have a smart contract. However, uh, there's an interesting XRP Ledger DeFi live space happening that's going to be with VET and uh, Mayuka and also Krypton Rider. And what I wanted to do, because I'm not sure I can make that 5 a.m. call, but just in case, I want VET to ask Mayuka to touch on how, if possible, the XRP Ledger's escrow might be used to efficiently and securely settle derivatives. For example, the futures contracts on the XRP ledger, not through a side chain. I'm most interested in this answer. And just a little bit of fluff before I jump to a wonderful clip with the former Rippler Naveen Gupta. This is not what you think it is. It's the Japanese creator Tatsuya Tanaka always playing with your mind and his miniature creations. Naveen Gupta has landed at Crystal Intelligence. He is the CEO. He's going to explain to you what their company is up to. We'll also hear from Nick Smart, who is a very interesting guy. He is the director of Blockchain Intelligence. Yeah, very interesting. He's got 15 years of experience as a professional intelligence and security analyst working for government agencies and private companies, as well as experience working as a compliance officer for a crypto asset trading desk. Nick is currently a member of the International Compliance Association. I think this is a very interesting gentleman. Um, I, I know he has a, he has a real, uh, how can you say, a real drive to to get the bad actors out of this space. It's from their blog that you can see they are not only busy, but quite effective all over the globe. All right, everybody, until next time, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye. Um, so Crystal Intelligence is a blockchain intelligence firm. And what we do is we do analytics, we do investigations, we do forensics. And really the idea is how can we keep the crypto world safe? Right. So that's the fundamental reason we exist. Uh, we have been there since 2016, really working with regulated crypto businesses, regulators, law enforcement, and supporting them in this quest of making sure crypto stays safe, safe for everybody. Uh, I'm Nick Smart. I'm the director of intelligence for Crystal. Um, my whole background uh, experience has been working in intelligence in one various form from working for the British government through to now uh, working in cyber threat intelligence now onto what we do for Crystal. Um, in preparation for this, I put together some statistics because there are lots of numbers that get pushed down around fraud generally. So these numbers are from 2023 uh, from the FBI, the UK National Fraud Intelligence Bureau, uh, and the Japanese National Police Agency's reports. What we see is the mechanisms that are employed, romance fraud, is highly effective. Uh, and substantially, the losses are much greater. It's done gradually over time, over extended periods. And this is why when we talk about fraud, it can be so hard, one, to convince someone that they're being a victim in the first place. And the second part is being able to get in fast enough to stop this kind of uh, situation.